Hey, welcome back everyone. Uh, this is uh, Blueprint Lecture Outline 4.0 and this is on medication safety. Medication errors are a very serious problem uh, in the medical field and unfortunately happen quite frequently. That's why there's a lot of lawsuits centered around suing physicians and pharmacies and pharmacists and nurses, etc. <clears throat> but we're all human and humans make errors that are sometimes unavoidable. Um, we're not always conscious in our daily work. It's really difficult in an eight hour um, work day to be conscious all eight hours. So uh, prescription errors must be avoided because the consequence uh, can be serious and sometimes fatal uh, for some patients. Um, so we're gonna talk about medication safety. So we've, you've gone, you've seen this before, the five rights, five rights, uh, type that in or write it in, the five rights of medication administration for the patient. Okay, know this? Uh, one, the first right, the right patient, the drug must always go to the correct patient. The right drug, the right drug must always be chosen. The right route. So the drug must be given via the correct route of administration. If the correct drug and dose are given, but via the wrong route, then a medication error has occurred. Um, the right dose, dose. Type that in or write it in, D-O-S-E. The right dose and dosage form. So the patient must receive the right dose and form. Um, a dose that is too high or too low is considered a medication error. And then finally, the fifth right uh, for patient is the right time. So um, the patient must receive the medication within the prescribed time frame. Uh, for example, if, if the medication is due at, due at 8 a.m., then the nurse may be permitted to give the medication any time between 7.30 and 8.30. Uh, the medication, medication is given outside the set parameters is considered a medication error. Okay, know the five rights for the exam common question that uh, they test you on. Um, 4.1, error prevention strategies for data entry. Data entry, typing stuff into the computer, information to the computer. So, um, prescription or medication order to, th uh, to the correct patient. Medication error is, prevent is a preventable uh, mistake that involves medicine, whether prescription or over-the-counter. It does not matter whether it is intentional or unintentional. Hopefully it's not intentional. A medication does not need to produce, produce harm to the patient. Often medication errors go undetected until the harm occurs. Um, a, types of errors, and let's go up to page two. One, dispensing errors. We're talking about types of errors. <clears throat> Uh, there are two types of dispensing errors committed by the pharmacists and one by technicians. A. Mechanical. So a mechanical error occurs in the preparation and processing of a prescription. An example of a mechanical error would be if the pharmacist or technician read the prescription properly but dispensed the wrong medication to the patient. Uh, keep in mind, keep uh, Keep in mind that it is ultimately the pharmacist's responsibility to dispense the right drug to the patient. So if a technician commits a dispensing error, it will be a mechanical error uh, because pharmacy technicians are not permitted to perform judgmental duties in the pharmacy. So a mechanical error is the most common type of error which uh, can be committed by both a pharmacist and a pharmacy technician. B. The second type is judgmental. A judgmental error is one committed only by a pharmacist, since it is the total responsibility of a pharmacist to make sure that the right drug is dispensed to the patient. It's the result of a pharmacist making an incorrect decision during the screening of a patient, during drug utilization, uh, <clears throat> drug utilization evaluation, or counseling the patient. Okay, two, prescribing errors. The route of administration not specified, um, patient allergies, the incorrect strength of the medication, incomplete medication name, 
quantity and refills omitted, and additional directions required. So these would be prescribing errors. The, the, um, the physician or dentist or veterinarian, they uh, didn't uh, complete completely um, write out the prescription with all the parameters that are required. So those are prescribing errors. Three, administration errors. Uh, oral medications <laughs> that were given intravenously, I don't know how that would happen, but um, oral medications given intravenously. Enteral formulas administered parenterally. Enteral means formulas that go, you want to go through the intestine. Intravenous medications administered intrathecally you know, in, the, in the central nervous system in the spinal cord. And intramuscular preparations administered intravenously or vice versa. Um, page three. Intravenous syringes used to measure doses of oral medications. You can't do that now. Oral syringes are specifically for oral medications. Uh, ear medications being placed in the eye. Believe it or not, this happens, and it's not really common, but uh, you cannot put ear medications in the eye. You can do it the other way around. You can put eye medications in the ear, but remember, when you uh, put medications in the eye, such as drops or ointment, it has to be sterile. And otic products or ear medications are not sterile. So it's okay for, ear medi for uh, eye medications in the ear, but it's not okay for ear medications in the eye. B, computer data entry errors account for about 11% of all pharmacy errors. C, employ the five rights of medication administration at all times to avoid prescription errors. If you do that, you'll be fine. D, double check all data entry points when typing data into the computer, such as the patient name, the date of birth, the address and phone number, uh, insurance information, the drug name, again, be, be on the alert for uh, look-alike, sound-alike drugs, and there's actually a resource PDF that you have for look-alike, sound-alike drugs. Uh, the drug strength, the drug form, dosage form, tablets, capsules, cream, eye drops, ear drops, topicals, patches, suppositories. Um, eight, the proper translation of the SIG, of the directions. And the quantity of the drug, and whether it's con a controlled drug versus a non-controlled drug. Um, E, workplace issues that may contribute to medication errors. Obviously, one of them would be talking a lot, right? Okay, so workplace issues are noise, stress, multitasking, like doing more than one task at the same time, smartphone distractions. Uh, a lot of pharmacies now employ this rule where you, can, you may not have your smartphone on while you're working. You can only use your smartphone during your breaks and at, lunch, uh, at lunchtime. Um, similar medication labels, the font size and color of the font, medication labels that are difficult to read for whatever reason, uh, page four, prescription handwriting that is difficult to read, so that's the L, L, um, if it's illegible. We want to make sure that when the prescription comes in from the prescriber's office that we can read everything, and if there is a question about it, then the pharmacist must call the doctor's office and clarify it. Okay, F. The ISMP is called the Institute of Safe Medication Practices. Please type that in or write it in. ISMP stands for the Institute of Safe Medication Practices. And this is devoted entirely to medication uh, error prevention and safe medication use and represents over 35 years of experience in helping healthcare uh, practitioners keep the patients safe and continues to lead efforts to improve the medication use process. The organization is known and respected worldwide as the premier resource for impartial, timely, and accurate medication safety information. Errors and error-prone abbreviations and names of drugs are reported through the ISMP, uh, the National uh, Medication Errors Reporting Program, uh, and they have a site. It is www.ismp.org. It's .org, not .com, because it's a nonprofit organization. One, it's a uh, resource for error-prone abbreviations, and two, it's a resource for conf uh, resource for confusing drug names, uh, specifically look-alike, sound-alike drugs. Okay. Four point two. Package, patient package inserts and medication guide requirements. 
uh, example, specific directions and precautions. Every drug uh, bottle, p a prescription bottle that you open up, um, has a patient package insert, either attached to it on the outside or actually inside the bottle. So what is a patient package insert? A patient package insert, or PPI, is a package insert formally prescribing information in the United States. It's a document and it provides, uh, along with a prescription or over-the-counter medication, to uh, it's, it's provided with prescription or over-the-counter medication, just as I stated, uh, to provide additional information about that drug that is written in layman's terms. So it's written in layman's terms. Uh, PPIs are published by the drug manufacturer and included with every prescription drug that is sold in the United States. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of the PDR, the Physician's Desk Reference. That is basically a book that is just full of patient package inserts. And it can be biased because they're written by the manufacturer. One, <clears throat> the information on the PPI includes the description of the drug, clinical pharmacology, indications and usage, contraindications, warnings, precautions, let's go to page five, warnings and precautions, um, adverse reactions, drug abuse and dependence, if, if uh, applicable, um, overdosage, dosage and administration of the drug, how it's supplied, like is it a box of uh, 30, is it a bottle of 100, etc. Um, and the date of the most recent revision of the labeling. Two, the pharmacy is required to provide a PPI to all patients receiving metered dose inhalers, oral contraceptives, estrogen and progesterone preparations. Package inserts should be um, given to any patient receiving a new medication. These days the computer pharmacy software automatically generates a PPI or medication guide for the patient. Uh, when the, when the prescription is processed. And this is uh, known as the drug monograph. And this is a result of OBRA 90. If you remember OBRA 90, um, that's a law that required uh, consultation to Medicaid patients, Medicare patients, sorry, Medicare patients. B, a blank are paper handouts given to the patient that come with many prescription medications like hormones and certain blood pressure meds. A medication guide, Okay, medication guide. Type that in or write it in. Our paper handouts given to the patient that come with many prescription medications like hormones and certain blood pressure beds. The guide addresses issues that are specific to a particular drug and drug class and they contain FDA approved information that can help uh, patients avoid serious adverse events or adverse effects. C. The FDA requires that medication guides be issued with certain prescribed drugs and biologic, uh, biological products when the agency determines that, one, certain information is necessary to prevent serious adverse effects, two, patient decision-making should be informed by information about a known serious side effect with the product, or three, patient adherence to directions for the use of a product are essential to its effectiveness. Okay, 4.3. Identify issues that require pharmacist intervention. For instance, DUR, ADE, OTC recommendations, therapeutic substitution, misuse, and missed dose. DUR is drug utilization review, if you remember. ADE is adverse drug event, and then OTC is over the counter. All right, let's go to page six, We're at the top of the page. So often there are interventions required by a pharmacist uh, when dispensing or recommending a drug for the patient. Technicians have an important role though in, the, in this process. DORs and ADEs are flagged by the computer software system which then requires the attention of a pharmacist. And it's the pharmacy technician when they're processing the prescription that brings the DUR or the ADE to the attention of the pharmacist in which case they usually drop everything they're doing, they go over and they read the drug utilization review, adverse drug event, and if they feel like it's comfortable to override, they'll go ahead and override it with their initials and password. But a pharmacy technician, remember this, should never ever override a DUR or ADE in the computer system. A, drug utilization review, DUR. Please type that in, drug utilization Review, Drug Utilization Review, DUR, or Drug Utilization Evaluation. 
A DUR is defined as an authorized, structured, ongoing review of prescribing, uh, dispensing, and uses of medication. DUR encompasses a, a drug review against predetermined criteria that results in changes to drug therapy when these criteria are not met. So this promotes patient safety and compliance and efficacy. Um, drug utilization is mandated by OBRA 90, which stands for the Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act. And again, this is the OBRA Act that required uh, pharmacists to give consultation uh, to the patient, to the med Medicare patient. One, during the filling process, a new prescription is checked against all the medications in the patient's profile to determine if a possible interaction may occur. The drug is contraindicated or the patient may be allergic to the medication. The DUR is generated by the computer software system and then when a technician is entering a prescription into the pharmacy computer system, a DUR will be generated when there is an actual DUR and the pharmacy technician must stop the filling process and then alert the pharmacist so that the pharmacist can, can actually view and review uh, the DUR. A technician, again, must never override a DUR generated by the computer system. The reason why I'm saying this is because it is a possible question on, on the test. If a pharmacy technician, technician sees a DUR in the computer, uh, can they override the DUR? The answer is no, absolutely not. Only a pharmacist can override the DUR. Um, a, drug-drug interactions, drug-food interactions, compliance issues, duplicate therapy, and disease state review, and so on. Two, as a technician, never, ever, Type it in or write it in to your PDF form. Never ever override a DUR on a computer screen. I don't know how many times I got to say this. Uh, the pharmacist must always be called to view the DUR and will over override it um, if appropriate based on his or her judgment. Okay, page seven. Um, adverse drug event or ADE. So an ADE is an injury resulting from medical intervention related to a drug. Uh, this includes medication errors, adverse drug reactions, allergic reactions, and overdoses. ADEs can happen anywhere, in hospitals, long-term uh, care settings, and outpatient retail settings. ADEs continue to be the single most frequent source of health care mishaps, continually placing patients at risk of injury. Uh, this is not unexpected, given that drug treatment is the most common medical intervention, and medication use is highly complex, multidisciplinary, and largely a manual process. A pharmacy, when necessary, should uh, file an FDA adverse event reporting system called FAERS uh, report to the, to the FDA. This is done, this can be done online now. C, OTC recommendations. Pharmacy technicians are not allowed to recommend OTC products to patients because it involves professional judgment and um, consultation. Only a pharmacist can do this because recommendations are considered clinical in nature and a pharmacist is clinically trained to recommend OTC products to patients based on their disease states and symptoms after being evaluated by the pharmacist. However, a pharmacy technician can lead a patient to where an OTC drug is located in the store because they're not consulting or giving advice about the drug. Um, they can also tell a patient what their personal experience is with the drug, but cannot recommend any drug to a patient. Okay, D, therapeutic substitution. A therapeutic substitution is when an insurance company will not pay for a particular drug because it is not covered under their drug formulary. A drug formulary is a list of drugs that are covered by an insurance company. It is used to control costs since there are many drugs within the same category of drugs some more expensive than others. Uh, for, ex for example, an insurance company may not pay for Ad, uh, Adbear inhalers, but they will pay for Simpocort or Brio Elipta since they contain smaller, similar active ingredients. So that's what a drug formulary is, right? It's only insurance companies will only pay for certain drugs that they've approved, probably be, uh, through their uh, pharmacy and therapeutics committee. And the same with the hospital. Every hospital has a pharmacy and therapeutics committee that uh, meets to determine what the drug formulary is for the hospital. Okay, 
page 8 at the top. E, misuse and missed doses. So a pharmacy technician can assist a pharmacist um, when he or she notices that a patient has misused or missed a, drug, a dose of a drug. Uh, this is often discovered through interaction with the patient through conversation, either in person or over the phone. Misuse and missed doses can also be discovered through DUR alerts in the computer system when filling the patient's prescription. Patients should ask the pharmacist what to do if they forgot a dose. Situations vary depending on the medication and frequency of dosing. Uh, providing this information is part of the counseling and can only be done by a pharmacist. F. Patient counseling. Um, a pharmacy technician may ask patients if they have any questions about their medications, but it is a pharmacist's responsibility, not a pharmacist te pharmacy technician, to counsel the patient. The following information can be given to either the patient or the patient's representative, and this information, though, is not considered to be counseling. The name of the medication, the dosage form, the dosage, and the route of administration. However, providing the information below is considered counseling because these decisions must be made by pharmacists, and they include the duration of therapy of the drug, uh, action to be taken if a dose is uh, missed, common or severe side effects, interactions and contraindications of the medication, which includes food, uh, self-monitoring of medication, proper storage of medication, and special directions for use. Again, this is this, these information that I just cited are considered counseling because the decision must be made by a pharmacist. Okay, let's go to the next page, which is page 9. Four. Point 4.4 4 is look alike, sound alike medications. Again, you have a resource PDF list for this. A. There are many drugs that look alike and sound alike that can result in prescription error dispensing and contribute to an adverse drug event, an ADE. Look for the look alike, sound alike PDF under resources on the website, on our website. Uh, an example of a look alike, sound alike drug would be hydrolyzine and hydroxyzine, right? They almost are, they, they look alike, they even sound alike, hydrolyzine, hydroxyzine. But they're two totally different medications. Hydrolyzine is for blood pressure, and hydroxyzine is for itching or allergies. Two very different drugs with different pharmacologic actions on the body. 4.5. High alert risk medications. A. High alert medications or drugs are medications that bear heightened risk of causing significant patient harm when they are used. Although mistakes um, may or may not be more common with these drugs, the consequences of an error are clearly more devastating to the patient. These are high alert drugs. An example of this would be clozaril or clozapine. Uh, see the high alert meds under resources uh, on the website. 4.6. Common safety strategies. Uh, example, tall man lettering, separating inventory, leading and trailing zeros, limit use of error prone abbreviations. You want to limit the use of error prone abbreviations. So let's talk about some common safety strategies. A, tall man lettering. This is the practice of writing part of a drug's name in uppercase letters to help distinguish look alike, sound alike drugs uh, from one another in order to avoid medications. Examples, acetazolamide, prednisolone, humalog, alprazolam, cefazolin, lorazepam, carbamazepine, and clonopin. Sometimes even on the bottle, like on hydrolyzine bottles, um, they'll use the tall man lettering to make sure that uh, you don't get it um, mixed up with hydroxazine, for instance. Uh, the list is published by ISMP, right, but is not sanctioned by the FDA. The complete list can be accessed at www.ismp.org backslash tools backslash tall man letters PDF. Let's go to page 10, guys and girls. B, separating inventory. The presence of separating inventory is another safety strategy that can be employed by the pharmacy to reduce errors. These include separating inventory by oral meds, topicals, ophthalmics, 
otics, and antibiotics. A pharmacy can also um, use a robotic system like the Script Pro system to stock the top 100 or 200 drugs that are the most commonly dispensed. One, the pharmacy should have a method in place to identify short-dated medications. Two, the pharmacy should also allocate a specific area of the pharmacy for outdated, damaged, and returned medications to be stored in a later process. Three, the pharmacy should identify a place to store recalled drugs until they are returned to the manufacturer. C, leading and trailing zeros. So this is a common math error when making pharmaceutical calculations and it is often associated with fractions or decimals. So and we'll, we'll review this in the math section if you haven't done so already. D, limit use of error prone abbreviations. The FDA and the Institute for Safe Medication Practices, ISMP, have recently instituted a nationwide campaign to eliminate the potentially harmful use of abbreviations for drug dispensing. This includes written medication orders, computer-generated labels, pharmacy order entry screens, and commercial medication labeling, packaging, and advertising. Uh, you want to see the ISMP error-prone.pdf and resources on the website. E, do not crush list. This is usually refers to like a sustained or extended release action. You don't want to crush it, otherwise it, you uh, uh, will eliminate the sustained action effect. You basically destroy the integrity of the tablet by crushing. So the ISMP has established a list of medications that should never be crushed before administration because of a variety of reasons, which include what I just said, slow release dosage forms. And let's go to page 11. Uh, or extended release dosage forms. Basically, it's the same. And terror coated dosage forms um, that may irritate the mucous membrane, the rate of absorption may be increased. The coating of the tablet may release the drug over a period of time. Taste, skin irritant, liquid filled liquid caps, sublingual dosage forms, film coated dosage forms, effervescent tablets, and um, teratogenic effects. Remember that? Women who are or may become pregnant should not handle crushed or broken tablets because the medication can be absorbed into the body and produce birth defects to the fetus. And then lastly, uh, local anesthesia of the oral mucosa. Uh, mucosa. Okay, electronic prescribing. Um, you see a lot more electronic prescribing today as technology takes hold. Uh, it eliminates illegible prescriptions. That's a good positive plus. It uses clinical decision support to reduce preventable errors. It improves communication between the clinician and patient. It enhances communication throughout the prescribing process. It increases access to patients, uh, to access to patient and reference information. And it improves work efficiency. Electronic prescribing or e-prescribing. Um, G, advantages of auto automation. One, you get a reduction in medication errors, obviously. Uh, you get an increased speed in, in medication processing. And you manage and track inventory. Last page, page one. H, examples of pharmacy automation. One, AccuSource monitoring system. This is a product by uh, Baxter. Um, Baxter is a manufacturer of IV bags. That's their primary business. Um, this is an automated TPN compounder with total nutrient admixture, and the AccuSource is then attached to a computer. Two, Baker cells. This is uh, one of the older automated systems. This is owned by McKesson Corp. in San Francisco. They are one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, distributor in the United States. An example of an automated counting and filling device, each cell contains a particular medication. The desired quantity, quantity is then entered by a computer system and the baker cell counts the desired quantity into a vial for the pharmacist. Three, barcode scanners. So the FDA uh, requires that barcodes be placed on all human drugs and biological agents, which will result in an improvement in both patient and medication safety. 
The potential for errors will be greatly reduced because the right patient will be receiving the right drug and dose at the right time through the right route. Four, a physician order entry system. This results in a reduction of medical errors by having complete and accurate information, accurate dose calculation, and appropriate clinical decision support. Five, mobile robots that travel through a hospital to the various nursing stations to deliver med uh, meds. Um, you're seeing more and more of these as technology improves. Probably within the next five and ten years, it will be just a common thing watching one of these robots roll through a hospital or skilled nursing facility. Six, Script Pro. This is, uh, you've seen videos on this and in a lecture. This is uh, owned by Rite Aid Corporation. And this is an automated robot that fills and dispenses the top 100 or 200 drugs within a pharmacy. It is a standalone unit that is integrated with the pharmacy computer system. And then finally, Pixis. This is owned by Cardinal Health. Cardinal Health is another distributor. It's McKesson's competitor. Uh, this is an automated point of use storage system for making floor stock items available to a nursing staff in a hospital or skilled nursing facility. Servers are connected to a Pixis server and link the hospital billing and information systems together. Okay guys, that's the end of 4.0 medication safety in the um, blueprint outline. And uh, we will see you in the next uh, lecture 5.0.